Uh, I'm pretty sure you hear a lot of this news nowadays as Trump is selecting um, Elon Musk as slashing regulations or government bureaucracy. All right. Now, I don't want to get into the sticky side where they, a, a lot of the news at the moment is saying like his conflict of interest is benefiting more for him. Um, I'm not going to get into too details about that because it's, everyone has to benefit for some way or form. It's not only just him, but everyone in whatever what regards, whether it's a government field or individual field, whatever, right? So, the biggest problem with the Western world is the amount of regulation and bureaucrats, right? And that's how, why nothing is really being made in the first world country, if you really, really deeply look into it. Like, if you think about Germans, you think about immediately the Mercedes-Benz and, you know, automotive, right? But if you say whatever, but that's not the way how it is. It's not supposed to be like oh, a car. If you talk about Japan, they didn't have that much regulation back in the days. And you have all these flourish car brands just going around the world and technology. And then you got Asia, you got like, you know, like uh, South Korea. And then China is booming so many of these cars and everything and it's not even an even playing field and when you have too many regulation or government bureaucracy or laws in place it really sabotage and it really doesn't invite people who invested back to the country and they're going a third world country as i mentioned the third world countries who doesn't have all these regulations and not on top of that cheaper labor as well a lot more submissive and you know you don't have to go through the rest so when you have like that and will me and my um co-workers who planning to s establish a food business right not not getting a restaurant but like uh, trying to to get there and obviously food makes more sense because the real reality thing is that food poison it's real right and there's a lot of bureaucracy. Where, where obviously, how do you store the food, or where do you store the food, or how do you prepare the food? Where how are you going to use the refrigerator? What is the plan B if the refrigerator goes out? What sort of you know? It, it just goes on and on and on and on. It's sort of like a risk assessment, but it's just in a different level. So everyone thinks of a side hustle business will be a food, right? No matter what sort of industry, they will say like, oh, nonos, I can use nonos recipe or whatever, right? And you think of food is the way to go. And you start to say to yourself, why nobody's making good food? Now, I'll break it down, right? Obviously, starting a business is going to cost more than 100 grand, all right, to start with. And um, the food that we're wanting to do, we're wanting to have a rental kitchen higher, right? And when you have it like that, then the council wanted to know, where do you transport the food back? Where is it going to get to? So if you make the fresh food, whatever what you're making, and, you know, you're going to leave it in a, whether in a warehouse or in the kitchen or in your house or in the catering area, they want to know the full details, what you're cooking, what you're making, and wanting to know what's contained with, you know, dairy you know dairy or gluten or veg vegetarian vegan or perhaps nut allergy whatever they wanted to test you in from head to toe which is nothing wrong with it but to know with the whole thing right so we wanting to uh, establish the uh, the food location which is in moreland which is mary beck which is the council region right the the kitchen is located in coburg which that's the council region and that particular company uh, has told, informed us that there is a, a book, it's been booked out to all the way to next year, March, right? Then I said to myself, oh, well, they have a couple of branches across Melbourne. Why can't we just, you know, you know, just use whatever available time, you know, a slot and then we use it. And apparently you cannot do that. And this is where you get to see the bigger picture. So you can get the food license, food permit. In, in whatever council region that you put on the address. Then, for example, for renting or whatever, it's a different story. It's a different ball game. Now, I'm pretty sure all of us hear about, our oh, food transportation or whatever, you know, if someone purchased the food from you, 
then they deliver the food or whatever. But if there's gonna be a food poisoning or some or food going off during that period of time, you're going outside of the outbound of the council region. So if you're going outside of Mary Beck, now it becomes to a different council region. So you're playing a lot of cards here. And you got to be strategic about where you wanted to have your um, the kitchen location or the market or the restaurant, right? Whatever, whatever or catering, whatever the 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 label is, right? And when you have like that, um, it, it is very frustrating because you cannot go across the board or anything like that. The only thing that came to my mind for loophole is um, Uber Eats, right? When you have Uber Eats, it goes to different demographic, whatever. But when you look carefully with the whole thing, you cannot just simply deliver your food to a different council region or suburb if it's outside of a council region. They wanted to specify where's your fridge, how do you store the food, and you know, X, Y, and Z. And I'm not going to get to details. But that's the heavy regulator. Everyone, all our customers or customer base is every, everywhere. But can you imagine the amount of regulation at the government level or the bigger level, the IT level or whatever? It's just going to make it worse. That's just an idea of regulation and bureaucracy.